Okay, today we're going to paint some corn flowers. These are also known as bachelor's buttons. They're usually blue, but sometimes they're also pink or sort of a purplish color. We're going to use a number four round brush and some blues and some pinks and some greens. The full list is in the notes below. When you are painting um, these flowers, try to keep your color varied. So you want to, um, you know, go back and forth between blue and a purplish blue and a pinkish blue. The petals of a cornflower are sort of frilled or flared out at the end. They're not simple um, petals like a, like a daisy or something. Take a second and just look at some actual corn flowers here. You can see what I mean about how the petals are shaped, how they sort of frill and flare out at the end. It's just a really important characteristic to understand about the corn flowers when you're painting them. I often add raw sienna to whatever green I'm using when I'm painting greenery. Um, raw sienna just gives it a bit of a, a more natural look. Oh. Now we are going to paint the pink cornflower. When I was trying to decide on the composition for this painting, um, I tried a lot of different compositions and I ended up um, including a pink cornflower because it gave it the um, interest and variety that I felt the painting needed. Um, most cornflowers are blue. But they do in fact come in also pink and um, sort of purpley colors also. I am making the center of the cornflower a little bit darker than the petals. Not only is that how it really looks in real life, but it also gives it that 3D dimension to the painting. There I am trying to pick up some of that pink pigment because I wanted um, it to be lighter where I, the light was reflecting on the petals. It didn't really work that well to be honest. It's very hard to pick up um, red pigments. Other colors you can lift them off but um, the reds tend to be pretty staining. While it's still wet, because I did want those uh, these two flowers to kind of flow together like watercolor does, I kind of like it when they blend together on the paper. Um, so I've started to paint this third flower while the pink flower underneath was still wet. I 
again, I'm trying to vary the color of the petals. Some are a blue-blue, some are a purple-blue, darker towards the middle. I didn't get super realistic with the way those petals um, look like little trumpets or something. I just gave enough of the detail there to um, give the impression of a cornflower, the way it frills out. And again, darker in the middle. Adding a little bit of darkness to the tips of the petals. This helps to give it um, a 3D look. When you add purple to green, it makes the green darker. It doesn't really look like purple. It looks like dark green. One of the other things I watched when I was thinking about how this composition should go, I utilized the stems to create a flow and a movement in the painting. So the stems have a curve and they sort of dance around on the painting. I'm using the stems in the painting to create movement to lead the viewer's eye around the painting. I just want to mention that when I was working on this painting, I actually did this painting probably 12 different times before I came up with this final version. I really struggled with this particular painting, which seems kind of simple, but for some reason I was just really struggling with it. Uh, I couldn't come up with a composition that I liked. I couldn't capture, you know, the cornflower the way I wanted to. And finally, I walked away from my painting for about a week, thinking I might not be able to do this one. And when I came back a week later, it was suddenly very obvious to me what I needed to do. And so I'm telling you this because lots of times when you're painting, um, you will be struggling. And sometimes the best thing to do is two things. One, don't give up. And the other thing is walk away from it for a bit, maybe, maybe a week, maybe just an hour. And sometimes when you come back to it with fresh eyes, it's more obvious um, how you can improve it. In fact, if you think you've ruined a painting and there's no hope for it, you should probably just view that as an opportunity to explore and experiment. If you think you've already ruined your painting anyway, then you can play around with it and try out some things that you might otherwise not have wanted to experiment with on a painting that, you know, you are more sure was going to work out. So maybe you'll play around with the colors or the 
values or something like that um, and just go a little wild and see what happens. It's a great way to learn. Just going back to the flowers, to the petals, and I'm adding little bits of dark to help build out the 3D-ness of the flowers. One of the things I decided to include in this composition was a couple of flower buds. And I decided to include them because they add interest to the painting. So in this particular painting, we have a big blue flower that you see head on. We see another blue flower that you see a side view of. And then we have a pink flower that's sort of a three quarter view. And there's gonna be two flower buds. And it's this variety in color and size and shape that make the painting interesting. And adding a little bit of purple to create shadows in the green. Right there, I am lifting pigment out with a clean, damp brush. And the reason why I did that is because I wanted that um, other flower bud to sort of fade into the background. Different elements in a painting have different, I don't know, levels of importance. And some things should fade to the background, but other things are more in central and in the foreground. And again, it's that variety of size and shape and color and um, foreground and background that make your painting interesting. Almost at the end of this painting, just adding a few little darks here and there. Okay, the painting is actually dry now. And I am going back with a damp piece of paper towel. I'm picking up little bits of color that I accidentally dropped on the painting. I'm also going back with a kneaded eraser and gently erasing pencil lines that I had drawn on the painting. You have to make sure your painting is 100% dry before you do either one of these things or you'll ruin it. And that's a wrap. We'll sign it and it's good to go. This is part of my wildflower series. I have these cornflowers, I have a sunflower, and I also have this wild bergamot. If you wanna watch any of the other videos, the links are in the notes below. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. 
or hit that like button. Thanks so much. See you next time.